Okay, we are recording. Welcome to the ITK Bar Camp on creating clean code by using type defs. Um, my name is Matt McCormick, and today we're going to be discussing how to use type defs to improve the maintainability and the readability of your C++ code, especially when you're coding with ITK the Insight Toolkit. Um, so, why are type defs important when you're coding? You know, the number one reason is maintainability. So, <coughs> you use type defs kind of like you use variables, and you don't hard code values. And then, if you ever want to change a type, all you have to do is change the type def instead of searching and replacing through all of the, all of the code base and having a very manual and error-prone process of changing the type. Uh, another reason, though, that is also very important is readability. So C++ is a strongly typed languages, and we always declare our types. And some people think that's a disadvantage because you know it's very verbose. It, it, it takes a little longer to write because there's more to write. But at the same time, that is an advantage because you can use the, the types, the declaration of the types, to inform a reader of the code of, of what you're working with and what you're trying to do. But that's only true, or that, that's more true, if you use type defs judiciously in a way that uh, you create meaningful names for the types. So if we use type defs to identify our types, we can create code that's readable and very understandable. Um, so this is very common in ITK. It's almost required in ITK. And it's, it's because your code becomes very unreadable very quickly. On the left here in my screen, I have some example code that's written in ITK, and because ITK is templated, it becomes even more important. So we have some templated code over here, and our goal is to clean it up by using type defs. It'll do the, exactly the same thing. It'll just be more readable, more maintainable, and uh, better code overall. So we're going to paste it, <laughs> and um, Starting off, you know, when you have these basic plain old data types, we can start and use type defs to identify those. So let's say our input pixel type is or, uh, so the syntax for type def in C++ is the type we want to assign to the type def, in this case, assign char, char, and then what you want to call the type definition, which, what you want to name it. So we'll do an input pixel type like that, and we use float uh, for our output pixel type. And notice now we have input pixel type, output pixel type, and that's more informative than just unsigned char, right? An unsigned char could be anything, a, a character, a number, um, you know, a number of apples. But when we call it an input pixel type, that's more informative. Whenever we see input pixel type, we know what's going on. We know what we're trying to do with that um, variable. And so we're going to replace all the floats to, OK. So now if we look down here, it is a little more informative. Now we have all these, uh, these twos all over the place. So when you're using type defs, it helps you when you're defining functions because if you have a 
uh, informative type def in, in the argument to the function. It tells a pe person that's using the, an argument to a function or a method uh, more about what the inputs are. And also when you're using functions or methods, you can use an, a properly named type def to declare and assign the type before you pass it into a function or even a template in the case in this case so if you didn't know what itk image is and, and the template arguments are now you know the first argument is always the pixel type the second argument we just have a number here that's not very informative but if you're familiar with itk it's the dimension dimension of the image so we'll declare that too uh, since this is a template it has to be const uh, for our template argument so we're gonna and it's an integer for the dimension um, and this isn't a typed f but uh, same idea we're explicitly giving a name to the, to the variable so okay that's looking better and now you notice that this is all one line spread, spread over two lines. You know it's very verbose, and if you try to digest what's happening in one line, <coughs> uh, it's you know it's nested. It's very complex, and it's hard to digest what's going on there in a quick manner. So we're going to clean that up by using type defs, and uh, type defs help, help us break down the statements into smaller chunks, and and we'll get a big hierarchical declaration of, of what's going on. So we're going to take this big statement and use a type def for the image here. And we're going to strip that out into a type def. And that will allow us to trim this down a little bit. So we can use a type def. We'll call that an input image type. So here we have another opportunity to define a meaningful variable. So that looks better, better. Um, it turns out we can actually do more here. Okay, now here we have it again, and, and if we wanted to change this value, we had to change it all over the place. So uh, when you're writing the code, you're saving yourself time by using type tests too. So we have to replace this one. Okay, input image type. Oh, looking good. And we should probably do the same for the output image type. So this, we could call this one an output image type here. We do the same here. Okay, looking better, looking better. And so another advantage is that um, you have your types defined in one place, and ITK is very good about this, so that <coughs> if 
if you want to change the types used in your program, all you have to do, if you do it properly, is change the type def in one location. And then all the other types in your code depend on that type. And then you just recompile. And two minutes later, you have new code base that, for example, if we wanted this used to, to use double, we could be using double a couple minutes later instead of spending a couple weeks manually going through the code and duplicating it and copying it. So it's very valuable. Um, so now we have type defs for our pixel types, our dimension, and you see how we kind of have separated the complexity into different levels here that we can see the different levels. Then our input and output image. And now we can actually do a type def for these filters too that are based on the images. So um, here for the reader, we'll make a type def. And it's convenient to declare the type def close to where it's used if it's just used locally. So kind of like a variable. If it's declared <coughs> close to where it's used, um, it's easier to read the code. Uh, okay, we'll just call this uh, reader type. It's more succinct. We don't, we're only using images here. And uh, so that we can replace with reader type. And now we notice this statement is much simpler. And we've reused that type. Semicolon. And then uh, same here. We can do a type def for this other filter. And we can give it an informative name so that you know that's helping our code readability. We don't just just call this a generic filter. We're going to call it uh, edge strength filter if we were trying to use this gradient magnitude to quantify the strength of edges. It get, informs us kind of what we're thinking, what we're trying to do with this. So then we'll, we'll change that there. and then delete a lot of code, make it more readable. OK, and then finally, we can do the same with the writer. Now, a lot of times in ITK code, or if you're looking at the source code, which you probably will find yourself doing, if you want to understand what's going on inside the inside the code, you'll see the C++ keyword type name associated with a type def declaration. So you see type def type name or <coughs> some type, and then the, and then the type def. And we're not using type names here. And why is that? Um, because type names are for what they call qualified dependent types in C++. So dependent, what are, what are they dependent on? They're dependent on a template parameter. So this code that we're writing here, it's not inside a templated class or templated function. So these type defs don't depend on a template parameter, and they're not dependent types. So you don't have to tell the compiler that this is a, a new type name. So we just use type def. And you might get some compiler errors if you compile and you don't have a type name where you should, or you have one where you don't need one. But uh, if you find those and you generally get used to them by either plugging type names in and experimentally 
getting rid of those errors or warnings. Okay, so we, we've cleaned things up. We have a bunch of typed apps now, and it's much more readable and informative and maintainable. If we wanted to change the dimension that our code works on, we just change this one character here, and all the code is now going to work in three-dimensional images. Very <coughs> recompile. Very nice. And if we compare um, <coughs> to the original, it's more lines, but if you try to look at what's going on in each line, um, you know, it, it's much more readable. So thank you for watching, and hope to see you all again. Any questions? Any questions at all? Okay, stop.